as we just kind of touched on, there are five primary mechanisms of hypoxemia. Low inspired oxygen concentration, hypoventilation, VQ mismatch, shunt, and diffusion defect. And we're putting diffusion defect last because this mechanism by itself does not typically contribute to hypoxemia in a patient at rest. And the reason for that is that the transit time of red blood cells in the pulmonary circulation is long, usually long enough for oxygen diffusion to be complete, even in the presence of a diffusion defect. But during exercise, the heart starts beating a lot more and a lot faster. And as a result, the transit time of red blood cells in the lung goes down. And so there's less time for the red blood cells to come into equilibrium with the alveolar gas. And so in that case, you can get hypoxemia, but not at rest. And as a result, diffusion defect is not usually considered a cause of acute hypoxemic respiratory failure in the ICU. Now, as we mentioned in the last video, a useful way to narrow down the causes of hypoxemia is to examine the AA gradient and see whether it's increased or normal. And to repeat, hypoventilation and reduced inspired oxygen both lower the alveolar oxygen, and so they have a normal AA gradient. And by the way, this reduced inspired oxygen is very rarely the cause of acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, and very rarely is the reason why someone needs intensive care. But it can result in the ICU from connecting inspired gas tubing to the wrong gas source. And of course, it can also happen at altitude. Now, these other three each result in abnormally large AA gradients. And VQ mismatch is the most common cause of hypoxemic respiratory failure. But combinations of causes are frequently present in critically ill patients. For example, in ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome, you often see VQ mismatch, increased shunt, and diffusion defects all at once. Now, another thing that distinguishes all these causes of hypoxemia is how they respond to supplemental oxygen. And this one is easy to remember. All of them except shunt should improve significantly with supplemental oxygen, whereas with a shunt, you'll see either a small improvement or no improvement at all.